Good evening, I'm Jim Zirin. This is The Digital Age. Tonight's show is about the raging topic of the day, the WikiLeaks affair. WikiLeaks, you will recall, published 250,000 State Department documents on its website. The documents had been stolen from the United States government. Is this a crime for which WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange should be prosecuted? He certainly has been prosecuted in the court of public opinion. What is the effect of the disclosures on United States foreign relations? Is it damaging? Or as some claim, is it helpful in light of our policy to foster greater transparency and openness on the Internet? Tonight's guest can help us answer these questions. He is Frederick P. Hitz. Frederick P. Hitz is the former Inspector General of the Central Intelligence Agency. He was Chief of European Operations of the CIA. He is a lawyer. He is an author of two best-selling books, one called The Great Game, the other Why Spy, Espionage in an Age of Uncertainty, and he's been my good friend for many decades. Fred Hitz, welcome. Nice to be with you, Jim. Uh, Pleasure. Now, why don't we start with uh, this uh, famous or infamous private first class, uh, Bradley Manning, who apparently downloaded the State Department documents and dumped them uh, with w WikiLeaks. What do you make of him? Uh, it's an incredible thing to think about that he had this access and that he had the time and that he had the competence to download as many documents as he did. I'm not sure as to the uh, topmost classification of the documents that he stole. There's been some indication that they were at the top secret level, but most of what I've seen and certainly what has been described are at the secret level. Nonetheless, the legend in the National Security Act that deals with what constitutes a secret document is that revealing it to the public would cause unacceptable harm to national security. So whether it's top secret or secret, at least as the U.S. government looks at it, it's a very uh, severe breach of security. Uh, now, how does WikiLeaks figure into this uh, picture? Uh, is WikiLeaks something more than uh, a massive media intermediary? Hard to say. And I think that's where a lot of the effort to stop WikiLeaks if it goes into the criminal justice system will, will be uh, spent. Because if they solicited this private to go out and steal that information, provide it to them so that they could reproduce it, uh, then it seems to me they, have, they are culpable for having taken stolen goods and for having uh, reproduced them in a way that uh, is unacceptable given the classification that they bore. If, on the other hand, they were just the, the dump, the repository that the corporal took them to, and what they were doing was just uh, uh, putting it into the public domain, under the New York Times Pentagon Papers case, uh, it's, a dif it's a difficult issue. Now we have this uh, uh, sketchy character, Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, who was, has been arrested in London uh, on uh, sex charges emanating from Sweden. It's been alleged that uh, uh, this is part of a CIA honeycomb operation, that the two women who were uh, uh, charging Assange are somehow or other linked with the United States government. Do you credit that at all? Swallows. <laughs> I don't think so. But what I find fascinating is that as we talk about what uh, vulnerability he has to prosecution, what we must remember is that we're not going to be able to do anything unless we acquire jurisdiction over him. Now, how and do we do that? Well, that's the interesting part. Presumably, the British are going to uh, answer the Swedish request for extradition can't imagine why they would be holding him without bail if that wasn't a key issue. And should he be then sent to Sweden to answer the charges of rape or whatever it is that, that uh, the Swedish government is leveling against him? Surprise sex. I Surpri ne never knew that was a crime. <laughs> <laughs> surprise sex. Don't know much about surprise sex. But once they get over that, then the, the United States would presumably have to 
uh, argue with the Swedish government that he should be turned over to the United States because Jim, as was published in a recent article by Ron Kessler uh, after a talk with John Martin, who was the top uh, FBI Department of Justice expert for many years in this issue of prosecuting spies, has said, you can't do a thing unless you obtain jurisdiction over the body. That is, he's, he's got to be brought to the United States. No trials in absentia in the no United States. No trials in absentia on matters of this kind, interestingly enough, uh, purposefully, because we have people serving in non-official cover positions, spying for us uh, in, in other places in the world. We would not want to have our people subject to uh, a, a distant prosecution. Uh, and so we obviously don't do it ourselves. Now, I guess there are three ways uh, we can get them. You've touched on one, which would be judicial extradition. Uh, the second would be uh, what has been called a snatch job, uh, where we just pick them up and, uh, and abduct them and uh, transport them here. And there's a history uh, to that, as you know. When the FBI acquired jurisdiction over crimes against Americans, terrorist acts against Americans overseas, at the same time, it was uh, permitted to them, if they could get the cooperation of another sovereign power, uh, to uh, snatch him, as you suggest. They could bring him back to the United States. My understanding is, I could be wrong, but I think I'm right, that in the current state of play, extraordinary rendition, when we snatch the body and take it to a third country for further investigation, typically in, in the... Uh, uh, recent past, uh, in, uh, during this period of, of terrorism, uh, the countries were like Egypt or uh, Syria or Jordan, where uh, methods would be used that wouldn't meet our standards of, of uh, humanitarian behavior. But that, I think, President Obama was pretty clear, is off the table at the beginning of this administration. as. Uh, he sought to close Guantanamo. Secret prisons and extraordinary renditions wouldn't do. But renditions, the part that we began to discuss, where yes, we what could, is meant by rendition? A rendition is when the FBI, sometimes with CIA cooperation, is able to lure a person back to the United States, lure him into international waters, uh, get a government, a friendly government, to agree to turn him or her over and we take custody and bring them back to the United States for trial, where our courts have said, all right, irrespective of the manner in which this individual appears before us, we will apply constitutional principle. That person will get a, a trial under our uh, constitutional provisions. Now, what he did is probably not a crime in Sweden. No. Uh, is it likely that Sweden would render him to the United States for trial? I, I don't think so. There seems to be skepticism as to, I, I know no more about it than you, Jim, reading in the papers, but it doesn't seem to me that uh, Europe has taken this WikiLeaks business as seriously as, as we do. Of course, it's not their secrets that are being revealed for the most part. It's whose ox is being gored. Indeed. Now, uh, Hillary Clinton says that uh, she favors a more open, more transparent Internet. And uh, the day Assange was arrested, the State Department uh, proclaimed it would host next May Press Freedom Day with a release which said, among other things, freedom of the media is a fundamental human right that requires strong support and constant vigilance. And yet, uh, Secretary Clinton was quick to denounce the leaks as an attack against the international community. Uh, do you see something uh, ironic or inconsistent, perhaps hypocritical in this position? I, I think they're walking a tightrope, to be sure. In the one sense, uh, transparency is good, and in another sense, obviously, seeing your own diplomatic cables displayed on the pages of the New York Times is disquieting. Now, uh, you have a, a right to your secrets. It's almost an inherent human right. I have a, a right to my secrets. Does the United States government have a right to its secrets? It, it, it may have, but it has to enforce that right. And uh, that's where the difficulty comes. It's no question in my mind that the private, the person who actually had access to these uh, documents and who downloaded them, is going to be tried and in all likelihood will spend a long uh, period in the slammer. But as you 
pointed out at the beginning, the, the outfit WikiLeaks, who uh, reproduced them for all the world to see, is in a slightly different position. Uh, now, you're quite accustomed uh, to secrets and uh, the cloak and dagger profession in which you were, were engaged. I think uh, you had a director, uh, about Richard Helms, about whom a book was written, The Man Who Kept the Secrets. Uh, secrecy is very important to uh, the intelligence services and to uh, uh, the State Department, isn't it? Absolutely critical. The protection of the anonymity of a source, uh, somebody who works for you stealing secrets is probably the number one law in all of, I mean, uh, human law in all of intelligence activity. You've got to protect your sources. Now, uh, based on your knowledge of how the CIA operates, uh, would anything like this have been possible? I mean, CIA has its own communications channel, doesn't it? That's uh, not accessible to other agencies, certainly not to privates first class in Iraq. It's hard for me to conceive that this volume of material would ever be uh, available or, or uh, uh, stealable uh, in, a, in a, an intelligence context. Uh, it does sound uh, strange. Now, I want to make one point because on this whole issue, the matter that concerns me the most is the fact that since 9-11, and more to the point, since the 9-11 Commission report was issued and the passage of the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism, Anti-Terrorism Act of 2004, there has been, it has been the policy of the United States government enshrined in law that there will be information sharing on matters of this kind. That uh, we needed, you remember that famous phrase, connecting the dots. And what we've got to do is get the FBI to share what it knows with the CIA and the CIA with the FBI when we're dealing with terrorist events. If you look at 9-11, this was a plot hatched in Hamburg, in Afghanistan with Osama bin Laden, uh, carried out in part and pulling the group together in Spain, but scheduled for carrying out in the United States. And you have different authorities at work. It's the CIA that was operative overseas, the Bureau, to a lesser extent, and in the United States. The CIA is, uh, since the passage of the National Security Act of 1947 that created them, has had very limited authority in the United States. So you had the perfect crime, so to speak. You had it, 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 it ginned up overseas, but scheduled for performance in the United States, and you had two different authorities uh, with jurisdiction in those areas, and traditionally their cooperation did not appear to be as full as uh, the United States would require. So after the 9-11 Commission report, the, the, the injunction was on sharing information, an information sharing culture. Guess what? With the Wik WikiLeaks uh, episode, I think that's a real setback to sharing this kind of information. If, a, if, a, uh, if the State Department feels that their cables are subject to being stolen and downloaded, they're not going to send those cables to all the areas that, that they did before, and they certainly probably are not going to make them available in as full a way to the military commands. Well, and that just sets us back in terms of information sharing a long ways. Well, of course, uh, insofar as we know, none of the, uh, the dump involved CIA documents or FBI documents. Not that I've or seen. Or documents of the security services. Right. Not that I've seen. So the real question is, uh, does this affect our government's ability to communicate within itself so it's uh, a one thinking system uh, rather than a whole bunch of agencies going off in their own direction and not sharing? Uh, their impressions, evaluations with other agencies. I fear that it might. Yeah. I fear that people will use this in a, as an excuse for saying, see, I told you so. If we let information out of our control, we won't run the risk that uh, it'll go anywhere, and how can we protect our sources? How can we protect these confidential relationships if we can't be certain that others will feel uh, that they can do it as well? It's interesting that that may have been exactly what Assange intended, because uh, he may be something other than an apostle 
of uh, internet transparency. He made the statement, uh, it is not our goal to a more transparent society, it's our goal to achieve a more just society. Uh, if leaks cause the government to lock down internally and to balkanize, they will cease to be as efficient as they were. That's what he was after. I think, so, that's, I think that's precisely the point. And in that sense, he, uh, for the moment, uh, has been quite successful. So he's kind of an information anarchist in that respect. Indeed. Uh, now get, them, get them to put those barriers back, get the silos to reappear uh, that confined information to a single reporting entity. Now, based on what's uh, been reported, uh, what's your view of the impact of the leaks on uh, the foreign relations of the United States? I mean, a diplomat said Berlusconi is a womanizer or that uh, Merkel is feckless. Or, isn't that the, you've seen thousands of diplomatic cables. Right. Uh, uh, isn't this really a, the typical kind of thing you'd expect? Yes, and at the end of the day, that's probably common uh, parlor talk in all of these organizations. They perhaps don't like to see it spread all over the New York Times, but by the same token, that's not going to come across as a surprise. It's kind of the cost of doing business. I mean, does it damage our uh, relations with Saudi Arabia that the king said we should cut uh, Iran's uh, head as though it were a serpent? Uh, and that's exactly what the Israelis might be saying. Uh, does that really uh, damage us? For a short period, I would think, but the, the, the foreign relations of the United States and their, their uh, interaction with the interests of other countries is so important that I can't really think it. Uh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer in the Gates reaction. Uh, they don't talk to us because they love us. They talk to us because they need us. Secretary Gates. Yes. Uh, and there were cables that uh, really comes as no surprise that showed that the Chinese government might have carried out the cyber attack on Google. Well, we all knew that before. Yes. Um, isn't uh, it an aspect of what's come out that uh, our government is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, that our diplomats are competent, uh, that uh, they're saying to one another in private and reporting back in private exactly what we're saying in public. Indeed, they're not going to an air-conditioned movie. They're out there meeting other people and finding out what, what is going on and, and what it means. Uh, let's just talk about the, uh, the possible criminality of uh, Assange and the leaks. We have no official secrecy act or official secrets act as they have in, uh, in the UK and uh, England. Uh, so the possession of a secret document provided you didn't steal it yourself uh, would not appear to be a crime. No, but I think the issue that will be looked at very closely is how Assange made his contact with the private how he uh, uh, came to be, uh, how, how WikiLeaks became the repository for what this uh, individual has stolen, if that's what's happened here. And whether Assange uh, uh, lured him, uh, 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 encouraged him to do this, and at the same time knew that he, was, he Assange, was taking uh, possession of stolen uh, classified information. I think that might be a a possible uh, theory of prosecution. Now, uh, of course, the reaction of United States uh, public officials uh, to this whole flap has been rather extraordinary. You have uh, uh, Representative King uh, calling for criminal prosecution uh, of Assange, uh, saying he was a terrorist. Uh, Condoleezza Rice wants to see him prosecuted criminally. Uh, Sarah Palin. Uh, who uh, has uh, su suggested that perhaps he committed treason. Mike Huckabee, presidential candidate, said uh, he should be executed. Off with his head, it's, yeah. it, it, it's really quite extreme. Uh, of course, you have people on the other side saying he should be hailed as uh, uh, a First Amendment hero. Uh, but what do you make of all this? Well, I don't think that's a political surprise. I think it's a serious matter. I don't think that uh, these documents should be out in the public domain, uh, but I don't think it's the end of the world, and I can see that the uh, politicians uh, maybe not as acquainted with uh, how the, how the uh, diplomats do their job are, are more alarmed at what's going on than, than, than perhaps you or I. 
Well, it's more than rhetoric, isn't it? Because yep. Senator Lieberman uh, called uh, Amazon and told them to uh, knock it uh, off, knock WikiLeaks off their servers. Interestingly enough, Amazon took them off uh, the uh, internet uh, servers, but uh, they continue to sell e-books consisting of the entire dump, uh, which is a somewhat inconsistent position. And Lieberman has called for new legislation that would cover yes. this kind of thing. Well, uh, even the president has suggested that this would have to be looked at, and you've seen the reaction uh, to the host of uh, internet uh, gypsies out there who want the the uh, uh, the system to be uh, receptive to this kind of a uh, dissemination of them and are trying to close down PayPal and 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 some of the other entities no it's a it's the front has become a lot more extended than it was in the beginning yes and we see on the other side of the political spectrum uh, this uh, apparent new political movement uh, for an unfettered internet, uh, Operation Payback. Uh, you know, let's do a cyber attack on PayPal, as you say, and on uh, Mastercard, uh, through which uh, WikiLeaks got donations, and on Amazon because they uh, dared to cancel out uh, uh, WikiLeaks' use of their servers. Uh, is the real issue here freedom of the internet? Well, it, it can be made so in the sense that the documents that have come out thus far. Uh, while embarrassing uh, to the United States in particular, our diplomatic uh, uh, ex exchanges with, with people, is, it, it does not appear to the, the hackers as something that is particularly uh, sensitive. And they say, why not? Why don't we have a right to, to have a look at these? So all of the rules, all of the, the, uh, the controls that classification means uh, are, are sort of losing weight in the debate as against the substance of what's being revealed, which just, just doesn't seem to be so exceptional. Uh, you're an old uh, cold warrior. Uh, are you amused or angered by a headline such as appeared in, the, uh, in an Australian paper, Putin leads support for Assange? I mean, uh, the Russians are having a, a public relations field day with all this. Well, they are. No, I, n none of that bothers me much, Jim. I have to come back to the point I made a moment ago that if this has the uh, result that cooperation between the FBI, the CIA, and all of those entities that are so are working so hard to protect another terror, prevent another terrorist attack in the United States, get scared about sharing information and go back to their old habits, which was keeping their information to themselves, uh, we've got a real problem. Now, while we're on the Russians, uh, uh, Putin was accused of having engineered the uh, assassination of a KGB agent named Litvinenko in London uh, a few years ago with, uh, uh, by introducing uh, lithium into his system, a lethal uh, substance. Does the CIA, uh, which was called upon by uh, at least some public officials on the right, uh, to uh, engineer uh, a, uh, an assassination of uh, Assange. Do they engage in operations like that? They do not. Do you favor any sort of action to uh, make the net more secure against uh, hackers uh, so that you can't have these uh, uh, operation paybacks and cyber attacks? I mean, are we in the midst of Cyber World War I? I think it's an issue. It extends far beyond Assange. If uh, a, a foreign power sought to shut down the United States and our economy and all of the, all of the selling and exchange of information that takes place over the net, internet by jamming these uh, entities and is successful at it, that has implications far beyond this WikiLeaks issue. Uh, and also, uh, Sarah Palin said that uh, he, uh, Assange had blood on his hands. Uh, is there any evidence that he has blood on his hands, that anyone uh, was murdered or killed as a result of, uh, of these disclosures? Well, certainly not yet. And uh, it remains to be seen what this additional enormous trove of documents is going to uh, show. Well, I have a question for you, Fred yes, Hicks. Sir. Uh, because we have to wrap up. Uh, do you think that the WikiLeaks considering First Amendment values on the one hand, considering the importance of secrecy on the other, uh, considering uh, 
uh, avowed U.S. foreign policy of greater openness, greater transparency on the Internet, uh, quite central to our uh, policy toward China and other countries. Uh, do you think this was good or bad for America? I think it was bad for America. And I think what has to be looked at is what was the motivation of this private in doing what he did? I, I, I step back from the WikiLeaks part of it. I suppose there's always somebody that's going to publish or, or, or try to get out in the, uh, to the public uh, uh, information of this kind if they're given it. The question is, how did this uh, individual form the intention to do what he did, and how in the world did he get access to the volume of documents that he got? I can see that as being something that a handful, of, uh, more than a handful of, of people in the Department of Defense uh, might be uh, dealing with, but one private to be able to pull the button and get all of this, these, this downloading, it strikes me as being remarkable. How did one private get to pull the button? Fred Hitz, thank you so much for coming by. This has been just marvelous. And thank you for coming by. Tune in next week for more on the digital age. Don't forget to visit our website at www.digitalage.org. For the digital age, I'm Jim Zirin. Good night and all the best.